The cheapest kind of floor you can make is a dirt floor. And in my addition to our little cottage, the floor system that I used was a uh, series of different aggregates, and I will explain those in this video, as well as the mixes and techniques that I used to finish off the floor with essentially clay, sand, and straw, a cob-like mixture, and how that all came out. So I hope you enjoy it, and uh, drop a comment if you have questions. I'm adding some material to the floor. The previous layers that are underneath here, there's five inches of three quarter miles gravel, then a vapor barrier, six inches of lava rock for insulation, and then we put in about five inches of road base. It's uh, nice and firm, it overwintered. You can see there's some cracking. So for this final four inches or so, I've cut this, uh, this clay body that I've pulled this road base from. That's right here on the property, 50-50 with sand. So that should eliminate any cracking. The way that I'm leveling this in, using a Bosch laser level, and then I have a rail buried in the material there. And so I'll dump material here, take my other rail, put it in there, take the mallet and tap it down until I get my proper level with the laser and then screw it off flat and then I'll come in here with the hand tamper and tamp it down. I don't want to bring a plate compactor in here with this uh, plaster on the walls. Don't want anything to rattle and shake. So I'll just tamp it by hand and then we will come in with the uh, earthen floor material which will be a red clay body, sand, and chopped straw. We'll do a three-quarter layer of that and then a quarter inch that will be those materials screened, and in lieu of the chopped straw, we will use cattail fluff so that it disappears in that final finish.
Thank you. I'm not even wearing shoes. Last sub four layers in and tamped. I've cut one inch rails to screw against. We're about to mix up our first coat of earthen floor. Got my wood trowel, plastic trowel, wood steel trowel, water. We'll spray the floor before we apply it. Move it mostly around, pack it with that wood trowel.
advantages of an earthen floor beyond the cost are that you have a large amount of thermal mass in your floor and in this room there's a lot of south side glass and long eaves so that in the summertime the sun does not shine through the windows but once we get into the colder part of the year sunlight comes in about 11 o'clock in the morning and heats up this floor during the course of the day which will then radiate heat back into the room at night the aesthetic of an earthen floor feels really good. It feels really natural. There are many reasons for that. It tends to be warmer than like a concrete floor or something like that. And it's also electromagnetically connected to the earth. So when you're on it with bare feet, then you're electromagnetically grounding the uh, polarity of, of your body into the earth. And, and that has many calming um, and positive health effects as well. It's also a very quiet floor because there's no movement, there's no subfloor uh, framing holding up plywood. It's very stable and that feeling of, of calm that it gives a room is palpable. In the pour of this floor mistakes were made. Um, the primary one I would say was a compaction issue combined with a substrate uh, mixture issue. I didn't have quite enough large aggregate in my mix when I did that final addition of road base. I should have probably added some gravel in addition to the sand and had I come in there with a mechanical compactor and done a slightly better job with the compaction I think I would have had less cracking in the final floor. Because the cracks are occasional and show some difference in level, that is a compaction issue rather than a mix issue, uh, the first uh, coat of the adobe section of the floor, I did a three to one sand to clay mix, which was clearly um, too light on the sand, as evidenced by the cracking that you can see in that level. In the final ratio uh, of four to one, I didn't have that uh, uh, frequent small cracking that you see if you don't have enough aggregate. And um, I would probably go ahead and step that up to uh, about a five to one mix in future projects. The risk with going too far in the direction of adding sand is that you can end up with a floor that's dusty. And we don't have that. We do have a little bit of uh, fine cracking and then a few areas of larger cracking. And because there is no Portland cement or lime stabilizing this floor, it should be easy to uh, dress those cracks a little bit by removing a little bit of material and then rehydrating them, creating a new mix and applying that in those areas. So. When we get into warmer weather and I can move all the furniture outside and, and retouch the floor, I'll do that and make a video for you guys so you can see that. I also did not add quite enough oil in the finishing of this floor. I could have done a fifth coat, I think, and uh, also would probably wax it to make it a little more moppable, but all in all, it's holding up pretty well. We got on it a little sooner than we probably should have because we were eager to use the space and had great need of it. So probably good to wait two weeks after completion and make sure you've got plenty of oil, plenty of wax if you're using it to make this floor permanent and moppable. But all in all, we're pretty pleased with it and hope you enjoyed the video.